let's talk about everything that I read in August. August I think was a pretty good reading month. I bounced around a few different genres and I ended up reading 12 books. So let's talk about them. So the first book that I finished in August was Mother of Death and Dawn by Carissa Broadbent. I have a whole reading vlog for this trilogy, the War of Lost Hearts trilogy on my channel. I posted a few weeks ago. I'll leave a link up above. Um, but wow, this last book brought the story together in such a unique and interesting way. This series is the story of Tasana. She is a slave and she escapes slavery and she goes to this place known as the Orders where they have people that do like mind magic which is the Midnight Order and the Day Order which is more like physical magic. So she kind of manipulates the Orders being like I want you to train me and then she wants them to then use their power to go and free all of the slaves. So they send her off to be trained by Max who is kind of like just like this recluse like something traumatic happened to him with the orders and he really wants something to do with them but he still is kind of beholden to them so he is Tasana's reluctant teacher and things just go from there it got out of control insane one of the most unique and captivating stories I've ever read I was I don't know it just came together in such a way that I can't even describe it like it was so beautifully written, so wonderfully done, and such like honestly like so so detailed layered and intricate story. Like I definitely will be thinking about this book for a long time and I of course gave it five stars. The next book that I finished is Last Sacrifice by Rochelle Mead and this is the sixth and final book in the Vampire Academy series. I have been reading the series for the past few months and I can't believe I finally finished it. This is the story of Rose Hathaway who is a Dampier, a half vampire, half mortal person and the Dampiers are basically tasked with guarding the lives of the Maroi which are the mortal vampires and the Maroi are taught to kind of just like love peace and they don't fight and then we have the Strigoi which are the immortal dangerous kind of typical vampires. So we have Rose and she is best friends with Lissa Dragomir who is the last Dragomir in one of these royal families and the sixth book just really goes into the politics of the world and we have seen such growth in all of these characters from the beginning of the series to now and I feel like everything was just wrapped up in such a beautiful way like I just can't believe that I didn't read these books when I was younger because I know I would have eaten up every single second but it was so 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 much fun to reread these as an adult and I ended up reading it on audio and I gave it five stars. Okay, so next is a really unique thing for me to talk about, and that is that I actually beta read a book, and that is Good Game by Madison Fox. If you know Maddie, she is my BFF. We've been friends basically since we started our YouTube channels, and she's releasing a book in October, and I got the chance to beta read it, which is so exciting. So it is following a masked gamer named Alex and we have like this rich artist named Stevie and it's just their romance and he's a masked gamer and I feel like that is just such like a niche thing that the romance world has been needing. It was hot, it was delicious and I had such a fun experience beta reading it so obviously I'm a little bit biased because Maddie's my best friend and I beta read it but it was so fun to be a part of a book in a different process than I ever have been. It's the first time that I really ever beta read anything and it was just such a delight and I was so happy to be one of the first people to read the story and I'm so excited for Maddie so please please pre-order the book. I will leave more information about it down below but I literally can't wait. I am so excited for you all to read it because it was just such a blast. So good. Perfect chemistry. Like uh, I loved it. I loved it and I would have loved it even if Maddie wasn't my friend. Next, I randomly picked up this audiobook because it seemed insane, and that is Delicate Condition by Danielle Valentine. And then I learned that they're actually basing the next series of American Horror Story on this book, which I didn't know, and Kim Kardashian randomly is in it. Um, so it's interesting. I didn't know about that reading this book. I just was like, okay, this seems like really cool. And it's a thriller that focuses around pregnancy. So there are some insane things that go on. We are following Anna Elcott and she is kind of like an older actress and she finally gets her big break breakthrough but then 
her and her husband have also been going like through IVF and she just has this like increasing pressure of stardom and she basically gets pregnant but then thinks that like people around her are like actively trying to harm her pregnancy and take her baby away from her and like I had no idea what was going on most of the time I ended up giving this book four stars I listened to it on an audio and it was just chilling it just went in some wild directions i could not see what was going on it was a little gory in parts especially around things involving like pregnancy and i don't know it was just i've never read anything like it and i think it will translate very well to screen for american horror story so i'm interested i have not watched that show in many seasons so i might watch it because i actually just randomly picked up the book that it's based on so it's pretty cool and it's really interesting that the book just came out and now they're basing a series like a season of the series on it interesting but i dig it next i was going to the beach and i was like i need a book that is perfect for a beach day and i picked up book lovers by emily henry and this is the story of nora who is like the stereotypical kind of like blonde career girl and there's even an author notes in here that it's like you know, in these kind of like 2000s rom-coms, you always have like the blonde career girl and they show her as like cold and it's kind of like, well, like, and then the guy leaves her for the girl in the small town and it's like, well, what actually is like that career girl story? So we follow Nora, who is a literary agent and she ends up finding like a rival editor in this small town that she goes to visit with her sister and it's they're kind of like romance I wouldn't even really call them like rival it says rivals they're like kind of rivals but they more so have just like a lot of banter with each other and it's like a very weird like coincidental that they end up in vacation on the same place and the story is just full of heart and I think Emily Henry's stories just have a lot of emotional depth to them which is why she's as popular as she is and I just love reading about Nora and Charlie's relationship and just the way it develops and basically honestly both about like just their love of books obviously this is called book lover so it's about two people that really connect over books and connect over their careers and I thought it was really interesting to have a romance book where like the characters are like no like my career is actually a priority for me and kind of like how do you balance that like relationship with careers and like actually loving your career and you know wanting to do it and be good at it so I thought it was amazing and I definitely with Nora being very career driven I relate a lot to that because I myself am very career driven and it's kind of nice to have that character in a book and like still get a happy ending and have be like happy in her career so I don't know I love it all very much and then there was also a lot about just like family and grief and especially like Nora's relationship with her sister Ugh, it just pulled up the heartstrings and I of course gave this five stars because Emily Henry just knows what she's doing with these romance books Next I read Bring Me Your Midnight by Rachel Griffin and I feel like this is the perfect witchy summer book. Rachel Griffin always writes witchy books that are connected to nature and somehow and in this book we have Tana who is very connected to the ocean. She lives on this island known as the witchery where all the witches live on this island and then all the humans live on the mainland. In order to kind of placate the non-magic people they release all of their magic in this ceremony to the ocean during a full moon and then that way they can only practice low magic so they can only really do like remedies and nothing too crazy um, and this is just kind of like their way of life so that they can live in harmony with the mainland and we have Tana who like her mother is the leader of the coven and they have arranged for her to marry the mainland governor's son to kind of formulate this alliance between the two lands and this edition also is really pretty look at that we have this on the back cover. Um, this quote on the front. And then a map. Ugh, sorry, my tabs. Um, but anyways, so Tana ends up missing one of the rituals to release her magic when she gets distracted by this boy she comes to know as Wolf. And Wolf is from like this hidden part of the island and he kind of shows Tana the power of what his magic could be if she didn't release it to the ocean every month and it's basically like a play between like nature and political alliances and Tana kind of finds herself in the middle of all of this and again I always find that Rachel Griffin's books have such a strong connection to nature and this one is really about kind of like you know what are you doing that is directly harming your environment and like what can you do to fix it and especially Tana who loves the ocean so deeply but then sees that all of the witches are actually hurting the island and 
um, their land and so it's very interesting and it's also just about like the power of magic and just you know kind of being hot in all the middle of it. I will say I did find the relationship between the two to be a little bit insta lovey so i only ended up writing this one four stars i liked all the, like i liked the romance but i think i liked more of like the atmospheric setting and the nature commentary more about this book but again rachel griffin just has beautiful writing and it is so atmospheric and perfect for like a late summer read on the beach especially because of all of the ocean imagery Next, I read a duology, so I'm just going to talk about the two of them together, and that is Frost and Ambrosia by C.N. Crawford. The series is called the Frost and Nectar series, so I'm just like a little confused why the second book wasn't called Nectar. But anyways, so we have our girly Ava, who is a fae, and she's living in the real world, and she kind of drunkenly one night tells off the fae prince, the Seely prince, and so she, he needs to find a wife to like replenish the throne of fairy and so like humans and fairies kind of like live in harmony they know of each other but they still have separate worlds so he needs is in need of a wife and he doesn't really want to actually marry someone and since she told him off in the bar he's like well there's no way i could fall in love with her and invites her to compete to be the queen and to go through to be the queen you have to compete in these like trials but since ava grew up in the human world she like has no idea what's going on and in order to like get money for his people, it's like filmed like a bachelor style style competition. So I ended up giving the first book 4.5 stars. I thought it was just like so fun. I loved the combination of like the TV and like the more contemporary elements with like the traditional fae stuff. But then the second book I ended up giving maybe like a 3.5 star because while I really liked the characters it read more of like a traditional fae story and we lost some of that spark and fun that we had with the first book with the whole competition because obviously things end in chaos in the second book and we got to get back to the beginning but it really didn't incorporate a lot of those elements that made the first book really fun for me so the second book in this duology kind of fell a little bit flat and I've kind of seen this with C.N. Crawford's series where like the first book is really fun. I mean I've only read one other series by her, The City of Thorns I think it is. The first book is really fun, has a very strong concept and then the other books in the series kind of it's harder to like stick the landing so I don't know what that means but that's just something that I've experienced with both of her series that I've read. Okay, so these next few books are what I read during the 48 hour romantic thon so if you've watched my vlog, which I will link it up above, um, it should seem pretty familiar. But first we have Feathers from the Sky by Jess Wisecup. This is like a special edition that she sent me in a PR box, which I was so excited about. Um, and we follow Gwen, and she doesn't know that she is a vampire hunter. And then we have Roman, who is a vampire, and Gwen's father killed... Roman's mother and so he is seeking revenge he kidnaps Gwyn but Gwyn is like what the heck I am just a normal human and things just spiral out of control from there but the whole time they you know are fighting their attraction to one another um Gwyn is a plus sign main character and Roman is described as husky so he's not you know washboard abs but he's got a man bun love it um and oh and the way that he kind of like he's kind of like stalking her to try and kidnap her and the way that he like kind of makes his move to like introduce himself to her and wiggle his way into her life is at a like spicy matchmaking boudoir photo shoot boudoir i don't know how to say that word boudoir sorry i'm not french anyways it was insane it was like fast spice in a way that made sense for the story and so it was delicious that way but oh my god the ending literally had me in a chokehold i have not been so shocked by a plot twist in a very long time obviously i gave this five stars i loved it and i cannot wait for the next one because wow this took me on a journey it took me on a ride and i can't wait to see what happens next then i read bewitched by laura thalassa which i'm about to be the number one bewitch supporter because i am absolutely obsessed with everything about this book we have Celine, and she really wants to get into Henbane Coven, which is like, um, it's kind of like college for witches, but then you're like a part of this coven for life, but you have to apply and be accepted. So one of the things that they need you to do is to go on a magical quest, and they don't really think her magical quest is like up to snuff, so they're like, okay, well, like you need to go on a new one. So she books a trip somewhere, and 
during the plane ride there, her plane is taken down by a supernatural force and her magic saves the plane but then when she's in the jungle she kind of gets like drawn to this deity and she accidentally awakens something really bad but the thing with celine is that her using her magic eats away at her memories so she really like can't remember a lot of what has happened to her and so she like meticulously has all of these notes so anyways so she gets back she joins the coven and when she's there the guy that she awoken memnon the cursed comes back and is like, hey, you're actually my dead wife. And she, that betrayed me. And she's like, no, I'm Celine. I'm 20 years old and I'm just like a witch at this coven. And so he kind of starts trying to integrate himself into her life and just like trying to convince her that like, it's kind of this cat and mouse game between them because he like thinks that she is his wife that betrayed him and he obviously like still wants her but she betrayed him so it's a very interesting dynamic between the two and I ate every second of this up. Five stars, definitely a contender for one of my top books of the year. It was literally so captivating. It was like dark academia, like witches, but more like of also that like darker fantasy paranormal element. Oh my god, I don't know. I just, every second of it, I loved it and I need more of this series because it was such an interesting premise and I just thought it was so well done and I cannot wait for more. Then I read Kingdom of Venom and Vows by Holly Renee and this is the third book in the Kingdom of Stars and Shadows series. We have Adara who is a star-touched human where she has these like stars on her skin. Basically means that she can amplify the power of the Fae. She's betrothed to the prince and she's taken to the Fae Kingdom on her 18th birthday and there she finds herself more and more drawn to the prince's brother who is the captain of the guard and kind of like He's the bastard child of the king so he's kind of the black sheep of the family and honestly this series is just fast burn vibes the plot it's there but it's kind of it's more focused on the romance and the spice and i think i ended up giving this book i want to say like 3.5 4 stars like i love the characters in the world and it's really fun but the pacing of this one just fell off. It was like 100 pages of like plot and then 100 pages of just straight spice with like not a lot of plot at all. And then we kind of like got the plot again at the end. So it was really weird to me. <laughs> like the pacing just felt like strange. Um, but obviously if you're looking for a fantasy series with a lot of spice and fun times, like this is the one to pick up. I had a good time reading it. Um, but that's just you just got to know what you're you're getting when you get into this series so that is all i will say for this one then i continued on with yona of the dawn it's been so long since i've read another volume but i'm finally on volume 11 and we follow yona she is this princess and basically her father is killed on her 16th birthday and she has to go on the run to try and reclaim her throne and oh my god it's just so much fun it's like a shoujo but it has more adventure and she has all these like dragon guardians that she kind of like goes around and collects and we pack her bodyguard and it's just slow burn and it's so much fun um and i ended up giving this one five stars i just love it i'm so happy to be continuing on with the series and i definitely need to pick up more i've kind of like committed myself to collecting one manga series in full and yona of the dawn has just captivated me from the beginning so it's the one that i'm collecting so i definitely need to read more Great. and those are all of the books that I read in August. I had such a great reading month in August and I'm continuing to bring those vibes into the future months of the year. So let me know if you've read any of these books down below and what you thought and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Music